Esta conferencia hace parte de, 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 una, eh, de un curso eh, electivo de, de Yachay Tech, eh, denominado Machine Learning, y eh, pues será parte de, de las videoconferencias que, que se encargará de divulgar el grupo de investigación eh, ESDAS, ESDAS Group, eh, Smart Data Analytic Systems Group, um, que bueno, que es el grupo de investigación que lidero y que tendrá eh, elementos de divulgación de, de, de información y algunas cosas de carácter formativa. Entonces, eh, pues en vista de que de que esto hace parte de, de, de la materia y pues esta, esta materia pues se va a ser impartida en inglés entonces todo este contenido teórico que son estas slides eh, será en inglés ¿eh? y, y bueno luego editaremos el vídeo y quedará pues todo el, el vídeo en, en, en los websites de, de ESDAS del curso de Machine Learning y de la materia de Machine Learning vamos a empezar ok um, Welcome to this lecture, which is about introduction to data classification. Mainly, uh, uh, it's related with the very first approaches, um, dealing with uh, linear approaches for classification, and we're going to make an, an important stress on support vector machines classifier. Um, Well, first of all, uh, thank you very much for joining this lecture, and and I have to to say that uh, I borrowed many slides from other courses material, uh, freely uh, available at at internet, and I just respectfully took them to make use of them in this. In this very short presentation for uh, academic purposes, no any other purposes. Okay. Um, well, first of all, these are these are some slides that we discuss in other lectures. Uh, this is just to put you all in context. Uh, uh, pattern recognition is a subfield of uh, machine learning. And it deals with uh, the tasks of uh, uh, to recognize uh, underlying patterns within data. For instance, if if we watch this picture here, um, uh, one of the questions that we can raise is, what occasion is this? And if we see all the all the people here is holding a a credential or card. Uh, for that very reason, we can infer that this is uh, an important meeting, maybe. Uh, maybe a, a kind of uh, academical congress. And also, we can ask ourselves, where are the faces? And in this case, we can apply some um, some uh, circular criterion and some uh, also some uh, symmetric symmetric criteria to determine where are the eyes for instance where are the the faces and uh, and also in fact we can know uh, who is who if uh, we have uh, some um, some prior knowledge meaning that we have uh, a collection of uh, pictures uh, with uh, faces of the people here, then uh, we have that, that means that we have a training set to uh, compare these uh, faces in this picture regarding the, those ones in the, in the database, tr uh, in the training database. Um, here is another example. Here we can say that uh, this is probably a, a concert or an opera, maybe. And again, we can know who is who, we can uh, uh, detect where are the faces, and, and we can say something about what is this, what, what occasion is this. 
uh, here we have a very graphic example um, to explain the the task of uh, pattern recognition this collection of pictures here is called a training set meaning that we we have uh, already collected this this picture these objects and additionally we know the labels or the names or the mark class of this this uh, subset as well this another one and this last one as well and then when we got a new object we can classify this new object into these classes these um, beforehand noun classes in this case ABC for instance we can uh, by uh, for instance by following a similarity criterion we can um, we can assign this object to this class probably the the maximum probability uh, we're gonna get to uh, at the moment to classify will be C maybe but what happens if uh, this shape here turns into something different for instance to um, to bumps here and and then if this this object is gonna resemble to to the object in class B okay uh, then the very first uh, task or the most classical task of pattern recognition is the classification for instance here we have a collection a collection of objects and uh, if we get if we um, have uh, an external object we can classify that object into the noun class the noun classes and uh, another another uh, point of view of the pattern recognition procedure is for instance here strictly speaking we have only one object which is this image but inside this image we have uh, some segments so some segments some parts of the image that can be uh, divided into some parts that's that's the task of segmentation um, and this another one is another special task of pattern recognition which is the um, detection detection means that uh, we normally have a binary problem you know the region of interest like this in, in this in this case and uh, we don't care about the rest that means that um, it's a, it's a kind of one class classifier then we are looking only for uh, capturing the information of this region to um, make su subsequently uh, a semantic uh, interpretation procedure then in this in this case the traffic signal is what matters and the rest is just uh, 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 non-interest class okay now uh, what's pattern recognition as I said at the beginning uh, it's a research area which uh, belongs to the big field of uh, machine learning the big world of machine learning and artificial intelligence and uh, uh, its aim is to recognize uh, patterns in data which is normally not uh, directly intelligible for human beings um, among its um, its sub areas we have uh, discriminant analysis feature extraction error, error estimation and cluster analysis uh, and uh, its uh, remarkable applications we find uh, uh, character recognition, speech analysis, um, many uh, medical applications, also uh, industrial inspection, uh, how can we uh, automatically identify people that that's very important for security systems for instance. Then there's too many, you know, there's a wide uh, range of applications and in fact uh, pattern recognition can be applied at, at, at any field generating data.
you know, generating data sets. Okay, here we have an example. For instance, we're going to classify this image here. This, 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 this image is representing a filling. And we're going to classify this into these classes. We have these classes here. Very happy, pain, very angry, sad, happy, confident, surprise. And of course, to classify this uh, you know, into classes, that means that we are following a supervised approach which means that we know uh, some, uh, we know the information of some samples or, 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 or some objects, and also we know the labels of these objects. You know, that's the work, that's the, the way um, supervised approaches work. Uh, for instance, here we have this, this object, and the very first step is the preprocessing meaning that we have to extract only the region of interest and discard the rest. You know, in, in this case, the only part I it matters is, um, is the face, you know, and then we can discard the rest of the image. And then this region of interest can be compared with uh, some representative uh, samples from the training set to uh, say uh, at the end if this, um, whether this image belongs to very happy or pain or very angry or whatever. In this case, this, this, uh, this picture belongs to very happy. You know, here you can see this is the membership um, value, which is the probability that this picture belongs to this class and, and, and is the, the highest value. For that very reason, we have to assign this object to this class. Okay, here is some notation uh, you all probably already know, but just to, to refresh quickly, you know, the data matrix we're going to denote uh, henceforth uh, the data matrix uh, like this, the capital, the uppercase X, and these are the objects, meaning that we have N objects, N samples, N P features, and this is a vector representing representing uh, a sample, and this sample is p-dimensional, um, is a p-dimensional variable. Okay, here we have the, the example, and this, another vector, is the uh, labeling vector, meaning that the Y1 is the labeling value for the first, uh, the first sample and YN for the, the last sample, you know, in, in, this, in this fashion we can build the training set, you know, the label of training set, you know, because we have this prior knowledge given explicitly information about the classes of the of the training set. Okay, now let's talk about uh, how can we represent represent data. Let's see this example. We have here six samples, we have three dimensions, and we have three classes. Okay, three classes because y is formed by these um, marks 1, 2, and 3. And three dimensions, meaning that the samples are represented by three variables um, and six samples, okay? And then the most intuitive uh, representation of data is the, the, um, the scatter plot. In this case, a three-dimensional scatter plot. Here we have the labels, you know, and every every single class has a different mark. You know, here you can see a triangle, here an asterisk, and in this one a circle. That means that you know this is to denote um, uh, the, the the different classes. You know, to to plot all the classes within the same. Uh, graphic. 
Okay, uh, now uh, uh, let's define the building blocks of a uh, pattern recognition system. The very first stage is, of course, measuring, you know, taking measures of uh, the objects, you know, for instance, the area and perimeter, as we can see in this example. You know, here we have the real world, you know, the objects in the real environment, and we uh, somehow extract some uh, measures from these objects to uh, graphically represent these objects in, in the scatter plot, for instance. And then, okay, the first stage is to acquire this information. And the next stage is, is the pre-processing, you know, uh, here is uh, not uh, explicitly uh, written, but, you know, um, that's very important to, uh, to have into consideration at the moment to design a pattern recognition system. Okay, and after that pre-processing stage, we have the representation stage, which means that we are going to get the feature space, you know, the final feature space. Meaning that that is the you know the the um, the space over we are gonna perform the classification process you know this is the feature space where wherein the generalization process uh, takes place. Okay, then data representation is another topic we have already discussed over, and now we're gonna focus on generalization. Uh, for, for example, in this case we have um, a linear classifier and, um, and this new object should be classified into class B according to this generalization process, for instance. Okay? And we remember we represent the objects uh, by using these two uh, features, area and perimeter. Here you have uh, uh, you know, some um, very recommended pattern recognition books. To start with pattern recognition, you know, that depends on the, the selection of uh, any book of this, depends on um, the connotation of, uh, of, um, of, uh, of uh, you know the, the the pattern recognition you are planning to design. For instance, if you are more um, for uh, uh, applying a statistical a statistical approaches, then you know uh, Babnik. It's very it's a very good one. You know, also web a statistical pattern recognition. But if uh, if if you are like me, you know, if you prefer more uh, um, algebraic uh, um, uh, developments, you can, uh, for instance, uh, start uh, with uh, Duda. It's a very good one. And the very introductory one is this one, Introduction to Statistical Pattern Recognition. Okay. Uh, here we have a uh, very simple data set, you know, it suffices with uh, linear uh, generalization, as we can see here, just a line, you know, it, it's a line because it's a two-dimensional problem, but in general we're going to have a hyperplane here, but linear anyway. And then uh, this, this data point should be classified as, as, as this class in this case, you know, here we're considering the feature 2, which is perimeter, and here the area. Uh, and then the way to make a decision is to define, you know, the, the, the formula, the equation to describe this line, you know, but equaling to zero like this. That means that if you get exactly um, this identity, the points will be located exactly over the line. And otherwise, if they are on the right, you will get, you know, in, in this part, in this region, could be the, you know, the, the upper region, uh, could be the right as well. The right region, uh, you will get uh, greater than zero. And in this region, you will get 
values uh, less than zero, okay? But what happens then when you get a point exactly over the, the line, you know, then you have to make a decision. For that very reason, you have to state a priority. In this, in this example, we see here, the priority was given to this class, you know, the, this region, the, the class A in this case. Uh, but not always this task is uh, that simple, you know, um, fortunately, you know, uh, for that very reason, the researchers on this area, uh, we earn money and we can uh, uh, make a life, you know. Uh, okay, uh, here we have two, two classes, A and B. And look at this, we have a new object here, and we're gonna classify this object. For instance, if we take um, a, a, a distance based approach, you know, by using just one neighbor like this, you have to assign this, this object probably to the class A, okay? You have to classify this into class A. But what happens if you, instead of uh, using this uh, distance-based criterion, you um, apply a density-based one, meaning that you have to collect some points around the point, around the point of interest, this data point, and then uh, uh, you, you have to make a decision, for instance, by following a majority vote criterion. In that case, you know, the vote will be greater for the points in blue, meaning that this data point should be classified as B. And uh, this is the case we already discussed. This is the linear classifier. We have this another case, you know, this is a non-linear one. It could be polynomial, okay? We have here, the degree of the polynomial could be three because we have two inflections here. And also, we have this uh, very hard problem. This is the one class classifier. We have one class practically embedded uh, into another, as you can see here. And this one is the, you know, the, the traditional problem, you know, because the, the, the world is, uh, is a, a multi-class environment, you know, and then this is the probably the 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 most uh, applied approach, you know, the the multi-class uh, classification approaches. Okay, um, then what's the idea behind the linear classification? Well, it's very very simple. It's just to define a line in a two-dimensional space or a hyperplane you know in in uh, in high dimensional spaces then in this bioplot here we have uh, three options we we have sorry four options to uh, classify the objects we have four lines here and the question is what's the best line how can you choose the best uh, boundary decision line. First, hay que habrá que editar, eh. Bueno, igual eso se puede editar. De deja, deja que mi madre conteste. Ya acabo de hacerlo. Eh, bueno, igual eso me da una pausa para tomar agua. ¿eh? Ok. Tú editas esto, ¿no? <ríe> vale. Tengo a mi, mi editor de vídeo al lado, ¿no? Ok, then the question is, how can we choose a line? You know, we have lots of uh, possibilities. We have actually an infinite number of, uh, of hyperplanes. Then, um, we have to follow a criterion. One of the most popular criterion, in fact, was uh, the, the is uh, one of the benchmark in the, the 
the most effective and popular one as well, which is support vector machine. Okay, that is the criterion we're gonna explain in this in this uh, lecture today. Okay, but please uh, first we have to remember uh, the equation of um, hyperplane. You know, we have uh, the the simple equation here. You know, a times x plus uh, b times y um, in these constant terms equals to zero. You know, this is the hyperplane in, in uh, two dimensional space, you know. And then we have to find this, these three parameters, a, b, meaning the, the, the direction vector, and this c, which is the bias term. <coughs> The um, a very uh, simple but uh, important and fundamental intuition is um, how can we best classify data, and uh, when we are uh, when we are defining the hyperplane uh, direction and an offset. Um, uh, the one um, one uh, very uh, simple, uh, probably the simplest intuition, is that we have to uh, maximize the distance between the classes. You know, between um, between the boundary decision and and the uh, and the different classes and the different classes. And in this case, we have a biclass problem, and. Uh, uh, and then we are um, aiming to maximize the um, the margin, you know, meaning the distance between the boundary decision and uh, and the closest data point for every single class, like this. You know, we can find uh, um, a region like this. You know that that it's called a decision region. Okay, um, now let's talk about this criteria, you know, the support vector machine. Um, then we start with, uh, with the boundary decision like this, and then we form the, su the support vectors like this, you know. These uh, parallel vectors are called support vectors, you know, and and they, uh, uh, you know, they have a symmetric distance from the boundary decision, and uh, they establish um, the margin. You know, uh, let's see this another example. Here, you know, you can see that the 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 margin, um, you know, is is not that good as as as, as this uh, very first case, and then this this these uh, lines are called support vectors. This is another alternative, but the margin is not the maximum. Then we have to optimize so that uh, we find the the best direction of the support vectors. Okay. Okay. Let's see this this part. Now let's discuss about non-linear SVMs. So far, w we uh, have discussed how can we uh, establish a line or a hyperplane to uh, classify uh, two objects. But what's behind uh, all this is actually, uh, in mathematical terms, uh, an inner product. And then uh, this inner product has um, lots of uh, possibilities to to be calculated, and then um, that means that w we can um, we can adapt our solution to the nature of data. Let's see this example. This the, this uh, very first example is is. 
is is uh, is simple, you know, to classify. But this second one uh, appears to be a very hard problem. But what if you know, rather than calculating the inner product as as we calculate in the um, in Euclidean space, we use another alternative so that we can get this two representation, two dimensional representation. Then again, it, it's gonna suffice with uh, just a line, you know, just a hyperplane like this. You know, that means that we take the original data and we map these uh, geometrical points onto another another space so that in this space the uh, everything is beautiful you know here is more uh, the task of uh, classifying data is simpler you know it's it's more uh, uh, readily to be performed okay now uh, a bit of maths uh, first of all, because this is a supervised approach, we have to consider this order pair. We have, of course, the data point, you know, the, the, the training data point, but also the label of that um, specific data point, you know. It's also called sample. And uh, here we are going to assume that the labeling will be given like uh, you know this is a binary classifier for that very reason we need two labels you know two uh, different labels in this case minus one and one um, and what about this this is uh, you know the the general form of um, uh, hyperplane uh, function then W will be uh, actually the the weighting factors of X Y Z you know the variables to to plot uh, uh, to plot the, the 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 data into uh, Euclidean an Euclidean space and this dot is meaning the dot product which in terms of uh, the Euclidean space, we can write, uh, you know, it's equivalent to, to write transpose W times X like this. And we have the bias or the offset term as well. Then recalling the, that images at the beginning, that image at the beginning, um, this, this is the general equation of of uh, of a hyperplane, you know, uh, uh, being a simple line in a two-dimensional representation, um, A and B will be W1 and W2, you know, uh, will be the entries of the uh, uh, w, w vector, and C divided by V will be the bias term, you know. And this W is um, uh, perpendicular or in, you know in, in general will be orthogonal to the to the hyperplane we uh, choose to classify our data okay okay uh, what happens in the in the most typical uh, linear classifier, we have this, which is the equation of uh, the hyperplane. And when this value is greater than zero, we're gonna be situated in this part, and uh, less than zero in this part, you know. And and equals to zero will be exactly over the hyperplane, over the line in this case. Um, then one, uh, you know, the one uh, intuitive uh, way to uh, write a decision function is like this: just calculating the sine, you know, the sine function of the 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 equation of the hyperplane, and that's it. 
because here you will get greater than zero, uh, you will get one, uh, less than zero you will get class minus one and otherwise you will get zero and you have to establish the priority and that's it as you can see here you know minus one one and zero but um, what uh, we do in su support vector machines is to establish a uh, margin uh, not only you know uh, this uh, this binary classification as we discussed here but uh, but adding this um, this margin, meaning that uh, the distance between the boundary and the support vector, you know, and the possible support vector should be uh, one. You know, well, actually, one divided by the 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 norm of uh, of the W vector, which is the normalization regarding the 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 W. That's it. And then uh, in the other direction, we'll get the same one. For that reason, we have uh, in this uh, that the whole margin will be 2 divided by the norm of uh, the W vector. And then how can we uh, join all uh, these two conditions into just one formula like this? You know, um, if you uh, establish this, this uh, margin, the this uh, this value will be greater than one or less than minus one and this one which is the label is always one and minus one then one times uh, something greater than one you will get one or greater and and, and it's the same uh, reasoning for uh, for minus one minus times minus you will get something greater than one and then these two conditions here can be uh, merged in this in this formula. And what is this? Uh, here we have this. This is the 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 inner product between the between the uh, i sample and the j sample. And and this is uh, the f the very uh, first notion of kernel. This is the linear kernel, actually. Okay, and we will see uh, in the next slides that uh, there are a lot of uh, options for calculate on the kernel. Okay, now uh, let's talk about the formulation of the of the binary SVM. Look at this here. Here we have that. Um, we have to maximize the distance, you know, and the distance can be calculated like this, you know, this is the equation of um, here, here we have the, the distance, this equation is the, is the distance. Um, then we're maximizing the distance, you know, uh, to maximize the margin, we're maximizing the distance between the, the, the data point and the and the boundary decision, you know, regarding all the data points. And this is normalized regarding, you know, the, um, the square of uh, the square of the norm of um, or the length of the, the 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 direction vector or weighting vector. And this problem, this is a maximization problem, and this problem, you know, uh, can be written uh, written in in its dual version like this. You know, here we have a maximization problem, and this problem can be written like this minimization problem. And look at this. What happens here? We have here this uh, this uh, this term divided by this another term, and we're maximizing this. What if instead of uh, maximizing this we minimize this it's the same you know these two problems will be e equivalent if we minimize the denominator then we're going to minimize the denominator we add this constant you know to have a quadratic um, uh, this is you know for uh, useful for subsequent uh, steps you know to optimize this function this functional here 
and uh, uh, we have um, and what happens here but we have here another condition but what we do here is to establish that this uh, numerator will be constant you know then you minimize the denominator and set the numerator as a constant then these two problems are equivalent and then we can re relax the problem, you know, in order to avoid writing uh, constraints. We can relax the problem by adding this term here. This is the regularization parameter. And by adding this condition into the functional, as you can see here, you know, and this is, you know, the average regarding all the data points, all the training data points. Okay, uh, another formulation is by uh, adding a slack term, you know, in order to have a soft margin. You know, the, the first formulation was a hard margin, one, you know, the distance was strong, you know, was uh, one. In this case, we add this slack parameter, and here we have the energy term, or the square term regarding this slack, in order to optimize this uh, functional uh, by involving the, the soft margin effect. And well, it's easy to demonstrate that um, uh, the two problems are equivalent. Okay, um, uh, think over. If uh, we have this initial data, and this complex structure uh, think that uh, we somehow uh, we can somehow map this uh, original data onto another space where the world you know, all the people in that new world is, is happy you know everything is wonderful there meaning that it's very uh, linearly separable you know it's really separable the classes there in that in that new space, okay. Um, then uh, let's suppose that we know this function that uh, allows you to map, you know, the, the renal data onto this um, this uh, this high-dimensional representation, which is actually, you know, which is indeed um, theoretically. Um, uh, in infinite domain, you know, and this is an infinite domain, you know, uh, and, and in that, in over that domain, you will get that the, you can assume that data are linearly separable. But the thing is, this is a latent variable problem, meaning that this function phi, you don't know that uh, uh, this uh, function, and but you know xi of course because they are the, the original entries and xj as well but you don't know this function for that variation you cannot calculate this in a product that's why we use the kernel trick we can estimate this in a product by uh, following some uh, some uh, some forms okay to you know we don't know uh, exactly how can uh, uh, how can we uh, estimate this uh, this inner product you know this these functions but what we do know is that uh, this value will be greater than zero meaning that this matrix k called kernel matrix will be uh, positive uh, semi-definite and then we have as I told you we have uh, some options to estimate the kernel function like this you know regarding you know the application depending on the nature of data depending on the um, computational uh, resources whatever and why to use kernels? Because they um, allow us to uh, map the data to a, 
a non-separable world, you know, to make a non-separable problem uh, uh, a separable one, you know. And um, and also that better that that representation of space uh, could be better in terms of uh, separability. We don't know about representation, but we don't know the classification results, of course, because we can classify at the end, and we we're gonna get an accuracy value, and then we can say if uh, that works or or uh, or doesn't. Okay. To summarize, as concluding remarks, um, we have discussed in this uh, very uh, introductory and quick lecture uh, about SVMs. Um, uh, we uh, discuss over the critical point, which is the selection of the hyperplane. How can we select? the hyperplane, you know, uh, in order that we can maximize the distance or between uh, the boundary uh, hyperplane and the support vector, which is the final aim of SBMs. Uh, when using uh, linear uh, kernels, we are going to get, of course, linear classifiers, meaning uh, degree one uh, SBMs, and we can um, extend, we can generalize uh, this um, this idea uh, by introducing kernels so that we can uh, get a um, um, data-driven approach able to capture the topology or more uh, more uh, carefully the, the nature of data and uh, uh, so that the, the, the classification performance can be improved. And also, um, uh, SBMs uh, have, uh, have shown to be a powerful tool to deal with real-world problems, you know, because, as I said already, uh, it can, they can explore the... Um, the structure of data, you know, especially when you use um, an adequate kernel. Okay, uh, for the for the lecture, you know, I I recommend this these resources. Um, all this information will be uploaded in in the websites uh, of the. Um, subject and uh, and the course of machine learning and and here they are uh, these are the links that you can visit to know more about uh, this lecture we have uh, both uh, lectures in, in English and in Spanish and uh, remember this lecture is supported by uh, Smart Data Analytic Systems Group, and also by Judge Tech University. Uh, thank you very much for your attention.